join us for part two of our solar installation. We've done the bit on the outside as you can see, now it's time to do the inside. Hi folks, join us for part two of my solar installation. Um, hopefully you've seen the first half, now I'm going on the inside to fit the Sukkot solar controller and sort all the wiring out. Um, I'll put a link to the first video if you haven't already seen that. I've done about all I can do with the solar panels now, they're glued on, I'm just waiting for them to dry. So I thought I'd come inside and have a go at the, um, or start having a look at the wiring. Um, so I'll give you a little explanation of what I've currently got. Right, so there's what I've currently got. It's a, a Truma um, solar controller. Um, I think it's a PWM style. So I did check it out. It wasn't big enough to take the new solar panel. So I'll be taking that out. Uh, I might use it in my shed. Um, what I've also got is a two-way switch there. Uh, position number one is the current solar panel through to uh, the solar controller and position zero is is nothing it's the uh, dead man switch or whatever you call it uh, and number two um, is a cable that goes directly to my ecoflow um, battery pack so I can um, I can switch the charge from charging the leisure battery at position one to position two where it charges um, the EcoFlow. Um, now I'm going from 100 watts up to 300 watts. So um, I'm going to be replacing that solar controller with a Victron 100 uh, stroke 30. I might have told you a little bit about that earlier. Uh, I want to tidy the wiring up in there. Uh, I want to put a fuse um, in the positive cable coming down from the solar array. So uh, I'm going to get on with that now. This cable here comes from uh, the solar panels and I've got them disconnected up the top. So um, I can take all these wires off and know that I'm safe because the solar isn't connected. Um, I've also got cardboard covers on the solar panel so they're not emitting um, very much voltage. They still do emit voltage so you have to be careful even with a cover on them. Um, so I can disconnect all these um, and it won't make a lot of difference and then I can tidy it all up. I've just realised the uh, battery is still connected so I'm, I'm thinking for now I'm going to leave the battery connected. Um, I'm just going to take the solar panel ones out which are actually a lead from the switch to the solar panel. Uh, which is in the north position, so it's quite safe. But I will, just for belt and braces, I will put a bit of tape around them. Because I may still, I'll probably still use those, uh, those terminals anyway. So The other thing I've got to do as well, which I haven't sussed out yet, is... Um, I've got to find a ground earth in there for the new solar controller. Um, so in here there's a load of wiring, so I wonder if there might be a ground earth in there. So I'll have to have a look. Otherwise I'm going to have to run one to a part on the body somewhere. Right, I'll whip this off then. Although, there's only a couple of screws. Oh. Probably need some a bit heavier with the uh, Vitron. It's um, it's about the same size, but it's deeper, uh, so it's a lot heavier. I'll take the front off this switch um, because I need to re-terminate some of the cables, um, especially the one that goes to the EcoFlow. I need to get a better connection on that. It's very crammed up in this switch, I seem to remember. So I have got some better terminals that may 
slightly better design. See, it's really crammed in there. So I'm going to show you my wiring again. Um, I've tested it all now. Um, the switch is working okay. It was a bit cramped inside the switch with all the wires, but everything's okay afterwards. Um, just to show you again, these are the wires that go to the battery pack. Um, these are the wires that come from the, the, the switched from the solar panel. So um, that will be going into the solar controller down there as well. Um, that wire there along with its negative counterpart comes from the solar panels on setting two which is now the power goes straight from the solar panels all the way through to the eco flow the eco flow has its own um, solar controller built in um naught obviously is the kill switch so everything's disconnected and then one brings the solar down through here into the PV section on there uh, and then out to the battery to charge the batteries there. Um, I'm gonna put this up on the wall now and um, connect it up and then I've already downloaded the app. Once I've done all that, then I'll, um, I'll show you the next step. This is all isolated because it's on naught up here. So, uh, right, this feed is the solar. So that's solar there, PV, which stands for photovoltaic, as you probably know. Didn't check these first to see if they were already open or not. One thing to point out, you'll notice that the pos and neg are sort of switched around on the battery. I don't know if that's so, the positives are further apart, but just be aware of that. Right, that's the pos in. Let's put the negative in. Again, I think these need loosening off first. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, they go in the bottom. I did buy some little terminals to go on these, but they didn't work that well. So, just the old traditional twisted wire system. All I have to do. Right, that's the solar panel in right um, I'm going to connect the battery now I don't need to show you that you know how to screw terminals in um, but this is uh, this is going to go up there so I'll just sort of tidy the wire up and cut a little bit off it and put it in the battery and then we're ready to switch on and see if um, everything's working Everything's all set up now, all the solar panels are connected, um, the battery's connected and the two-way switch is all connected. So I'm just going to show you briefly how to use the app. Um, I've already set the Bluetooth up, so looked at the Bluetooth on your phone and recognised um, the Smart Solar. You can see there it's listed mine, the Smart Solar uh, 100 stroke 20 and you'll see the signal's uh, full. So. I'll just open that up and you'll see it connecting. Uh, it does come up with a default pin of six zeros and you don't have to change it, but it gives the opportunity to change it. So I have done. Um, you'll see we're pushing out 92 watts at the moment. Um, it is quite dull and overcast and it's raining at the minute. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, as you know, we've got a 300 watt array up there. Uh, there's 20.47 volts coming through and 4.5 amps going in 
Um, there's the battery state as well, um, 4.7 volts, 6.2 amps, and it's in absorption state at the minute, so it's pretty much charged up, so it's just keeping it topped up now. You'll know there's bulk, absorption, and float in that order. A um, couple of things you have to alter when you first get it. Uh, you need to tell it what sort of battery you've got. So if you go on the settings, uh, battery, um, you can select 12 volt there. I've got a feeling it was um, already on 12 volt. Uh, the battery preset as well, I've changed that um, to AGM um, spiral. Um, it comes up with a default, which I can't remember what it was, but you, you click on... Um, select preset and that's the list of what you got and obviously mine's um, an AGM battery there's the gel batteries there and um, I'm guessing somewhere down there um, there's lithium so where's the lithium down there if you put in a lithium on it so that's okay uh, there are a couple of other settings you can change um, ours in default comes up with 20 amps on the max charge out output because ours is the 100 stroke 20 um you know i'm sure there's lots of things you can change but that's all we need to change to be honest okay so i'll go shut the settings down um the other thing that you might find of interest um is the history um you know i've had mine on a few days now and i'm, I'm showing you this how to set it up in retrospect um but you can see um what we've got over the last few days the, the weather's been a bit lousy to be honest we'll see it got up to 144 watts there um over the last few days when i've been testing it when it's been quite sunny we're still at the end of march um the most we've had is 229 watts which i'm quite pleased about because the sun is still quite low in the sky um so i'm pretty sure when um the sun gets a bit higher in the sky we're probably going to get about 260 watts but i'll uh, i'll keep you informed on that so that's a little bit about the um the solar controller um and setting it up it's fairly easy you know i found it quite easy so that's it folks for part two of this solar installation video the inside bit uh you'll see all the bits behind there uh this last bit of the video it's probably a week after the installation i wanted to see how things were going um, I've been out there testing it every day, um, seeing how much um, how much the sun uh, sends the power through the solar panels. Uh, the most I've had so far is 230 watts um, of a 300 watt array, which I think, considering it's only the first few days of April um, and the sun's still quite low in the sky and it hasn't been that sunny, I'm really pleased with that. And as I said earlier in the video, um i think there's a good chance i'll probably get 270 280 watts out of um, this array which i'll be really pleased about um it's charging the eco flow really quickly i think a full day of sun will probably charge it um obviously we've been having half days of sun so it's been taking a day and a bit to fully charge it um, it's given me a chance to try the various things that i can use the eco flow for and how quickly the solar panel charges it up again which is great um, it charges the single 100 amp hour leisure battery in no time so um, I'm really chuffed with that it's um, you know we're never going to get through that because obviously using the eco flow for the bigger items we're only really using the leisure battery for the pump and the light so I think my next step may be to get another leisure battery but I'll see how it goes when we start traveling around and, and see if I really need it um, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please feel free to make any comments and ask any questions. As a final disclaimer, I've said before, I'm no expert at this. Uh, it's just a video of my experience of um, fitting solar panels myself. Um, I found it okay. Um, I didn't struggle. Great having all the proper kit. You know, invest a bit of money in that. You can always sell it afterwards. All the crimpers and that sort of thing. Um, give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And um, we'll see you very soon with um, some trips out and look forward to it. Bye for now.